Hello everyone and thank you for joining us at today's webinar, Employability Webinar. My name is Dominika Yachem and I'm one of the employment coaches at the Employability Program. And today's webinar, um, we're going to be talking about discrimination and more specifically uh, disability discrimination within the workplace. Uh, the employability team is constantly developing new information on this really important and yet often overlooked um, issue. Um, but today we'll try to cover a few important aspects of it. Some of the things that we'll be talking about include uh, what is discrimination and what are the vari various types of it. Uh, what um, are your rights and how the laws are set there to protect you before uh, or against discrimination. And we'll give some examples of what discrimination may actually look like in, in the real life, as well as we'll share advice on um, what can be done um, if you are experiencing um, discrimination in a workplace and where to seek help. So what is disability discrimination? According to the Australian Human Rights Commission, disability discrimination is a situation where a person living with disability is treated less favorably um, than a person without disability in the same or similar circumstances. Essentially, discrimination happens when you are treated less well compared to a non-disabled person due to your disability. Uh, this means that if you've been treated unfairly because you have disability or you used to have a disability or perhaps someone thinks um, that you have disability, there are laws that are set in place to protect against that unfair treatment. Uh, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about these specific laws um, later in a presentation. Uh, so discrimination um, itself is quite a com complex concept and it has different forms, can have different forms, but there are two main um, phases of discrimination. Discrimination can, can be direct or indirect. So direct discrimination is really the kind um, that prevents people from their basic rights according to the laws or stops people from trying to go about their normal daily life. So an example of um, that kind of um, discrimination may be uh, if an employer learns that a qualified candidate has multiple sclerosis, um, the employer may assume that this person may take a little bit of uh, more sick leave, additional sick leave. So instead hire someone who doesn't have a disability um, purely based on that assumption. Um, but discrimination can also be indirect. So um, that means the decisions may be made or policies are created for all people, but accidentally or unintentionally um, cause a person with disability to be at unfair disadvantage. So example of this may be where an office or a gym may require stairs to enter and that would prevent um, a wheelchair user from accessing the facilities. Uh, now we'll look at some more examples of disability discrimination and what that might look like. Uh, while it can be a little bit confronting, it's, it's good to sort of look at some of those examples and see what that can look like in the real world. Um, so this, uh, discrimination, rather, <laughs> discrimination and especially discrimination related to people with disability is not often talked about, but as you can see from these examples, it's really important to share this information uh, so that we can actually start to address that, um, that is often quite blatant and sometimes not so blatant unfair treatment. So um, let's quickly look through these. Uh, some of the examples of discrimination in a workplace, asking a job applicant about the medical history or history of diagnosis, asking a disabled applicant to submit a medical exam without asking the same of another applicant, or rejecting an applicant after an interview due to concerns the employer would need to make the building more accessible and invest additional um, adaptive equipment to accommodate the person with disability. 
Another example may be telling offensive jokes about a person with disability repeatedly, which creates a hostile working environment or refusing a reason, reasonable rather, reasonable request for a workplace uh, modification or adjustment to accommodate a person's disability needs. Another option might be um, denying or um, passing over an employee for a promotion or a salary raise because of a disability, or if a company refuses to hire anyone with a history of back problems, regardless of the duties um, involved, um, this would discriminate against people with disability who um, meet the main requirements of the job. So as you can see, um, people living with disability can face many obstacles to getting a job beyond simply having the skills and experience to do the job itself. Now let's take a look at Nathaniel's story. Uh, the story was originally shared in an article on uh, news.com.au, originally written by Jessica Smith. Um, basically, the story reports that Nathaniel, who was diagnosed with um, Schoenemann's disease, a condition that results in malfunctioned vertebrae, um, didn't think it was relevant to disclose his, his disability until 12 months into the role, as it didn't affect his work and what he was doing um, on the job. Once he has mentioned it to his boss, Nathaniel noticed a number of changes started to occur. Uh, he was passed over for a number of projects, a promotion that he was uh, promised that was promised to him didn't um, happen, then um, new staff members were being placed in, um, in his place, basically doing his job, and he wasn't given any other work to replace his tasks. Essentially, he felt like his job was being taken away from him, and over time he was told without any real clear reason that his work wasn't up to scratch um, and all of that happened following his disability disclosure and ultimately he lost his job when there was no uh, when when he was told he was no longer needed so um, while doing our research into disc disability discrimination um, there were many more stories like Nathaniel's which really highlight how important the work that we do at employability to create more um, disability inclusive workplaces is. So now let's look at Susan's story. Susan, uh, who's a wheelchair user um, and had disability is um, very visible, says that she, as a result of her disability, faced disability discrimination all the time. This has been really evident in the past where she would arrive for interviews feeling she's fully qualified for the roles, only to be swiftly dismissed for no clear reasoning. And these examples are just two examples of disability discrimination that people with disability in the community face in the workplace um, on an everyday basis. And I think, you know, as much as those examples are perhaps not, not really comfortable, it's quite important to highlight that uh, people who live with disability uh, and may, um, may have perhaps disabilities that are less visually obvious, sometimes are concerned about questions about whether or not there is a legal requirement to um, disclose disability in the workplace. Uh, the fact is, there is actually no obligation to disclose your disability if it does not impact on the inherent requirements of the role, something that many people are not really aware of. So that's worth keeping in mind. Now let's take a look at some statistics from the Australian Bureau of um, Statistics regarding disability discrimination. According to the ABS, of the estimated 264,000 um, people aged between 15 and 64 living with disability um, across the household in, um, in Australia, one in four, that's 24%, said discrimination took place um, by the employer. 18 
that's two in 11 people said they faced the discrimination from work colleagues. Um, and that's that's fairly huge number. 42% of disability discrimination is related to a workplace. And just to put that into context, uh, some other sources of discrimination uh, were coming from a person who provided goods or services, for example, health staff, um, bus or taxi drivers, hospitality staff, sales assistants, etc. Family or friends or strangers on the street. And, you know, looking at those figures, um, especially um, looking at employment settings, uh, this is this is quite significant and it's not good to see the 42% of disability discrimination overall uh, is related to workplace. I think it just goes to show that a lot more work needs to be done um, when we're going to tackle uh, this issue successfully. So while we're on the subject of workplace discrimination, uh, let's spend a little bit of time talking about where you can go to get help and support if you have experienced discrimination or have been discriminated um, against because of your disability. So if you feel um, you have been discriminated against because of your disability or have experienced bullying, harassment, um, et cetera, you can file a formal complaint via the Australian Human Rights Commission on the website portal. Uh, and there is a lot of information there um, covering what discrimination is and advice on how to deal with it um, and how to um, how to you know, prevent it. I think it's really worthwhile to spend some time on the portal just to get the sense of what support is available. Um, but if you need more help, you can always call the National Information Service on uh, 1300 656 419 or 0292849600 and they will be able to help at any stage of the process. And just um, staying with the Human Rights Commission for a second, uh, let's look at um, some, some more statistics. Um, Although they support people who are facing discrimination in all areas um, of life and work, they actually reported in recent study that over 43% um, percent of all of their complaints are actually about uh, disability discrimination. So that's really a massive uh, proportion. Um, you can see um, on, the, on the chart here um, that the next um, biggest area for discrimination is gender, followed by racial discrimination. Um, this is really something that it's important to look at, it really does fuel the work that we um, do at Employability to raise awareness of this issue, um, both with job seekers themselves, um, but equally importantly with employers. So if you feel like you've been discriminated against at uh, work or place because of your disability, um, you should know that first and foremost you are not alone and you have every right to be treated equally. As we mentioned before, um, there are specific laws that protect your rights and the um, most significant piece of legislation in Australia is the Disability Discrimination Act. Um, which was passed into law in 1992. So just briefly, the Disability Discrimination Act um, refers to all aspects of life, covering education, accommodation, accessing public places, um, every sort of aspect of life. And when it comes to employment, your rights at work are protected by law under that um, act, under the Disability Discrimination Act. And as I mentioned before, it came into effect in 1992 and basically makes it illegal uh, for employers to treat you unfairly due to your disability. This means um, that your employer must treat you in the same way as fully able body person uh, when it comes to hiring, training, uh, promoting, 
and throughout the dismissal process. So in other words, your disability uh, should never be a reason for an employer to treat you differently um, to a non-disabled colleague. So what other information and support is available to help you understand your rights as a person living with disability in a workplace? Um, we have uh, some information here, so you can always read through some of resources of the Fair Work Ombudsman, and that can help really to build that confidence, uh, find out more information, um, and there is a lot of useful information provided by the Human Rights Commission. Um, as a person with disability, you can um, uh, you can get support and advice uh, from your either desk provider or specialized employment coach at employability, such as myself. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. um, you can also talk to Australian Centre for Disability Law, who provide more legal information on the issue. Um, so we've mentioned employability a few times. Um, I'm just going to briefly briefly talk about the program. Um, so employability program has um, basically um, support, has been, excuse me has been set in place to support job seekers um, with disability looking for meaningful employment. Uh, throughout uh, and basically providing that support throughout the job search. Um, we cover the topic in detail um, during the sessions with your employment coach who also has a lived experience of disability and can help you to understand and navigate through those challenges um, so you can successfully secure your dream job. Um, and we'll have some information at the end of this presentation where you can um, access employability and, and find out more, um, particularly on our website. So that will explain the program in more details. Um, so as we finish up the um, um, today's presentation, I'm just going to ask if there are any questions. Um, if there are, you're quite welcome to type them in the comments box. Otherwise, I can share uh, some of the questions that we have received previously, and um, they might be quite useful to consider. Any questions? Okay, we've got one question here. Can I access the program uh, from anywhere in Australia and how long does the program take? That, that's a really good question um, and the answer is yes, you definitely can access the program anywhere uh, in Australia as long as you've got reliable internet connection and a device where you can um, connect to. Um, so either a laptop, a mobile, tablet, anything will do. And um, basically the program would um, require to spend some time online um, covering some of the concepts as well as um, talking to your employment coach and looking at a little bit more detail. Now when it comes to how long does it take, um, it really depends on a person. Uh, some people um, may perhaps be a little bit um, more job ready and would just need to catch on the resume and cover a lot of skills, may, may go through some of the information quite quickly and others may want to spend a little bit more time, especially if they need to build up that confidence um, when it comes to job search overall. Uh, so it's really quite difficult to tell the exact time frame, um, but I would say you know it can be done as quickly as as a matter of weeks. Um, uh, there is ten modules that we're covering, uh, so it potentially could be done within ten weeks or even less. Uh, now we've got another question around the cost. Um, the good thing about the program right now, there is absolutely no cost. Um, so all we're asking for is people's attention and time, really, to, to spend some time on the program. I think we have another question coming up. Uh, do I have to look for work or do you search on my behalf? Now, that's a good question. Um, the, the employability program covers um, a couple of um, 
aspects. So one obviously is, is helping the job seekers, but we also work with some employers who are actively looking for uh, suitable candidates um, for the workplaces. So um, we can look at possibility of um, perhaps introducing um, our candidates to suitable employers, while we cannot guarantee that the person will um, um, secure a job, uh, we definitely can sort of help with that conversation. But our participants are also um, encouraged to um, to look for suitable um, vacancies, especially after um, they spend some time really um, finding out what that meaningful employment would look to them would look like to them specifically. Yeah, what if I don't have a resume? Will you be able to help me? Absolutely. That's definitely part of the program. And uh, we have one module dedicated specifically to resume and we are looking at creating not only any resume, but a resume that will help you to um, really stand out from the crowd and help you with your applications. All right, I think we, we've covered um, we've covered quite a bit. And as I said, um, you're quite welcome to always um, contact us at employability. So um, here we've got a QR code that will um, take you to all the information that we have covered, some useful links, etc. So that way um, you don't have to remember everything that I just said. <laughs> you can just uh, look it up. And you can always, as I mentioned, contact us either through our website at employability.org.au or through email at employability at scia.org.au. All right, thank you everyone for joining us. And we might um, uh, stop the recording in a minute. Um, thank you.